house is absolutely haunted. There's no doubt in the world at all that this house is a very, very haunted house, yeah. It always has been. I, I know all of that, but I didn't actually realise that you could have such an active, hostile haunting that would literally drive you mad, or actually drive you to leave your own house like I did. And it knew how scared I was getting, and it didn't stop, and it became worse and worse. But it happened. It's true, it happened. It turned up and it happened. It, 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 it just one of the things that this house did. Near the coast of eastern England sits a house unlike any other. Many drive right by this house every day to and from work and don't pay the building a single thought. However, to those who have passed through its halls, this home is known to be the most haunted house in England and is known by the moniker, The Cage. The Cage refers to the purpose that this house originally served as a prison. In the 16th century in Essex County, England, witch trials and accusations ran rampant. However, here in St. Osith, the accusations took a dark turn as a total of 14 witches were rounded up and tried for their spiritual crimes. One famous so-called witch was named Ursula Kemp, a woman who was arrested for a number of reasons including claims that she cursed townspeople, hexed others and caused them to die of various illnesses, and even prevented beer from brewing. Obviously, she wasn't doing these things and Ursula in reality was just a lonely woman who mixed herbal concoctions and salves in her home in order to attempt to heal the people who came to her with their ailments. The witch trials in St. Osith took the lives of seven different witches, including Ursula Kemp. These witches were imprisoned and tortured before trial, at the cage, and were hanged by the neck to die, and after being hanged, were buried in unconsecrated ground. The cage remained a prison for many years after these trials, and later became a quarantine house for victims of the bubonic plague many of whom died within the building. Some of the spirits who supposedly reside in the house include the witches themselves, various plague victims, a man who recently committed suicide in the building, and even the children of the witches. Back in the day, if your parent was convicted as a witch and executed, for the most part you were left alone to die with no aid. So many children of witches perished relatively soon after their parents were murdered, as there was no one there to care for them. The cage has been in the news a number of times in recent history, and while we were driving through the countryside to get there, I couldn't help but imagine how horrible it would have been to have been convicted for a crime that you didn't commit and executed. It just wasn't fair. Current homeowner Vanessa Mitchell, who purchased the home in 2004, has recently listed the house for sale on the market, and agreed to sit down with us for a rare interview from the woman who lived for years terrorized by the malevolent spirits of the cage. Why don't you say something for a mic test? One, two, three, whatever. Vanessa Mitchell, The Cage. Perfect. My name's Vanessa Mitchell. I bought this house in 2004. Um, it's called The Cage. It's a medieval prison, and it's now known as the most haunted house in England. The Cage is um, really most famous because it was a medieval prison um, back in the 1500s, and it's most famous for the incarceration of a very famous witch called Ursula Kemp. Um, she was hung as a witch, um, along with uh, two other women. Um, she lived in this village, and um, she was she she was taken. She was accused of witchcraft. She was accused of many things. Um, she was taken along with twelve other women, all in all, out of the village, and many of them were imprisoned here. Um, the three most famous ones we know, Ursula, and the other two, um, were also here, and they were the three that did. Um, that, that were that were hanged, that, that were executed for being witches. Um, the house was also used for the imprisonment of, of women, children, men, you know, for various other reasons. So it was, you know, the house is most famous for Ursula Kemp, but many people have um, been imprisoned here and, and obviously died in here over the years. Most recently, um, the, there was a suicide in the house a year before I brought the house. Um, and a man did uh, hang himself in, in, in the property, yes, that's true, yeah. I came to live here, um, I was actually, this is my childhood village where I lived as a, you know, where I lived as a child. And um, I'd moved out of the village, you know, like most of us do. And um, I, was, I was working away and I came home one day and I was home for the weekend visiting friends and I just saw this house up for sale, a for sale sign. And for some reason, I just had to own this house. I I really, really, really had to own this house. And I don't know why to this day. I was drawn to it, I was completely pulled to it and, and, and got literally obsessed by it. I owned a house um, in Newcastle at the time where I was working. And I thought, well, I can't, I, I need to buy this house. So I thought I've got to sell that house. There were tenants in my other house, which I owned. Um, and I did, I managed it on literally within weeks. I was living here, so I don't, I don't, 
I, I was aware of the house, obviously. I used to walk past this house as a child, turn back from school. And obviously, because it's a medieval prison and it's a very famous historical property, um, obviously people knew about it anyway, you know, down to the history. I, I, I don't really know exactly what drew me to it. I don't know if it was a bit of that. I didn't know so much of the history at that point, though, to be honest. But I just had to buy it, and I did. I did buy it. Had you heard before you moved in that the house was haunted? I, I don't think I, I... I'm asked that question a lot, and I don't really think I did. I've seen the dead since I was a child, and to me, you know, most places are haunted. So I think even if I'd have heard it, it probably wouldn't have put me off. I was aware that a man had committed suicide in here, literally months before. I, I was told that. Um, but no, I wasn't really aware of the history of the house in, in, in that respect. If I had have known, I'm not sure if I would have brought it. To be honest, knowing what I know now, I'm not sure I would have brought it. So it's probably, probably a good thing that I didn't know because I probably, well, it was good or bad, I'm not sure now, and I look back over the years, but no, I, I, I didn't know. I, since I found out there were a lot of rumours connected to the house, um, but on the time I brought it, no, I, I don't think I really did. That kind of parlays into the next question. So, you believe that the house is haunted? The house is absolutely haunted. There's no doubt in the world at all that this house is very, very haunted house. Yeah, it always has been. Um, from the day I moved in, there was activity here, and I knew straight away, and I knew this house. I knew um, pretty soon. I think I'd, I'd be in trouble with the house. The dead have never bothered me, ghosts have never bothered... Well, they, well, they, of course they did when I was younger, when I was a small girl, because you have to understand it, don't you? Mm -hmm. If you'd have told me that there's a house, a haunted house, it wouldn't have really put, 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 you know, if it was just normal, a normal haunted house. This wasn't. This was active and um, became more and more hostile over months and months and years. This is something I'd never experienced before and actually something that if you'd have told me, I probably wouldn't have believed could have happened. I know the dead exist, I know the dead come back. I know there's things that we don't understand. I understand, I, I know all of that, but I didn't actually realise that you could have such an active, hostile haunting that would literally drive you mad or actually drive you to leave your own house like I did. I left this house. I brought, you know, I loved it when I brought it. Um, and it was my dream house. You know, it's beautiful. It's a, it's a historical, beautiful, you know, house in, a, in the village I love. Why, why would I leave it? Why did I leave it? I left it because it was really haunted and I had no choice but to leave it. I wasn't given any choice but to leave it. Remembering and recounting what happened in this house is, you know, we, we'd literally need probably 10 hours and, and a long, long time, but it started off with smaller things, normal things that nobody really cares about. You know, the doors would open it. Well, I, I wouldn't, I, it didn't phase me particularly. Um, the cat would turn itself on. The the implements, you know, by by the uh, fire, they'd start swinging back and forward. The doors would shut. The doors would open and shut. The latches on the doors would go. Um, taps or taps on it. All just that general stuff. Or also just knowing, just thinking, oh, here we go. All of a sudden, the room's gone freezing cold, and you can see the black thing there. That that started off quite soon, um, <clears throat> within days, really. I knew the first day something was in the house because it literally presented itself, itself to me the first day. I was actually bringing boxes in, into the house. And then I knew, I thought, I'm, I'm going to be in trouble. You know, I, I just sensed it. The activity grew and grew and grew. Other people were seeing it as well. I had friends round to see it. Um, not to see, I'd have friends round and they would, they would, and a lot of them actually wouldn't come back again. I remember sitting in the, in, in here actually with, um, my friend Nicole moved in with me um, when I first moved in and she stayed for a year, she was my flatmate. And we were sitting here once in this front room, the two of us. And we're just watching TV or something, it was just a normal evening. And then all of a sudden I saw um, a, a, like sparkly stars. Um, and I was just staring, looking at them. And then they multiplied and multiplied and this entire room was just, I've never seen anything like it. You know, like the Walt Disney movies, when you get the sparkles, it was like that. And I looked at Nicole slowly and I said, can you see what I'm seeing? And I hadn't even looked her, I'm just, you know, you just kind of go into a daze. And she's just sitting here, she's just looking up, she's saying, if you're talking about all those lights, yeah, I am seeing it. That was actually a nice thing that happened. That was actually a really lovely thing that happened because it felt nice and it felt really protecting. But that was just one example of two people, you know, somebody else seeing what I was seeing.
But that was probably the only nice thing, really. So, saying that, I mean, I, I, I saw a man, I was sitting, I, it, again, it was broad daylight. Most of what happened here to me was, was in broad daylight. And people always ask me, why didn't things happen at night? And when I think about it, well, because I was under the bed going, duh, 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 I didn't, you don't go and investigate things at night, do you? It's not like the movies where you think, actually, I'm really going to, normal people don't. You just stay there because you're terrified. Mm -hmm. But during the day when you're sitting there and, and they just walk across the room, you, you do see them. Um, I saw a man and he was actually walking straight past here and he was looking at me through the beams and, it, and I knew he was there in real time. He was looking at me and I was looking at him and he had black scraggy hair and I could even see he had lines on his face here. They were quite deep lines and I could only see, the, see him from the waist up and, he, and I was sitting over there and he was walking, just, it was floating through there just staring at me. But he, again, he felt nice. He wasn't, um, he wasn't what, what the house became. You know, the house became very, very bad. But he was actually quite nice. He had a nice energy to him. Also... Can I ask a question? I'm really curious about something. Yeah? Just real quick. Um, so would you say then that the spirits here, are the, you know, the haunting here, whatever you want to call it, would you say it was intelligent and totally aware of your presence? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I would say that, um, I would say that the, a lot of the spirits in here were intelligent and aware of my presence and it was a real time situation. It wasn't stone tape theory, time didn't get trapped somewhere and it was replaying itself, it wasn't that. I believe what was here actively knew it was here, it was, was um, actively knew it was interfering in my life and affecting my life. I 100% believe that. I've seen them since a, a child so I, I know the difference. And this was here and and it knew how scared I was getting and it didn't stop and it became worse and worse. And I knew it wasn't good because a good ghost story, like you know you can talk to them and they you know they won't they won't literally try and drive you mad. They they don't do that. What was here became um I don't know if it was I believe I moved in here with, with layers of spirits here, malevolent. And, um, and normal ones, to be quite honest. Children, they were, you know, you'd, you'd sit in the front room and you'd hear the children running around playing upstairs. That you don't mind so much. But when you're on your own and the doors are opening and slamming and opening and slamming and opening and slamming and opening and slamming. And I say to people, you know, people say all the time, oh, I'm so scared my heart came out of my chest. Well, not really. Well, no, this is how, th this is how it feels when your heart, you know, that's how scared I was. So my heart nearly came out of my chest. When you say that it got bad towards the end, can you just kind of explain what you mean by that? Why? When was the shift and kind of what started to happen once it became more negative? I think looking back, it was negative early early on, but the the strength of it grew. I mean, you'd sit here and there'd be a big black mass, and it would literally go from the carpet, go up the ceiling, go, and you could see it. And that that happened quite quite early on, to be honest. But I th I, th I th it it just grew stronger. It, it definitely grew stronger. You know, like I said, so I'd 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 be in bed. Um, I'd had a, a small baby, and the door would open and slam, open and slam, open and slam. I was brushing my teeth, getting ready for work one morning. It was about half past seven, eight o'clock. I'm just brushing my teeth like you do. I was, this was, I think, even before I had Jesse. And um, I got hit so hard, I mean, so hard, that the toothpaste, I screamed, the toothpaste went up in the air, and there was nobody in the house. And this was a whack. This wasn't just a whack. This was a, a hostile, hard. I got pushed over when I was pregnant. I was eight and a half months pregnant, and I just hit the deck. Just hit the deck. Luckily, I fell into the spare room because if I'd gone the other way, I'd have gone down the stairs. My friends, uh, Kirsty and Neil. My friend Kirsty, she runs the cancer um, unit in Clacton Hospital. She's a very, very intelligent woman, very scientific. And her husband Neil, at the time, he was a sergeant major and um, his job was to you know, deal with the Taliban, you know, he was in the wars, again, a very strong, intelligent man. And they came over, they walked through here, again, actually through here. At the time, this floor was wood. And we went through to the kitchen, we made a cup of tea, we sat back down there, and then we're just talking. I hadn't seen Neil for ages, he'd been in the wars and he, he was home on leave, and, and Neil said, Ness, what's all that blood over there? And I, well, I've ignored him because there's no blood. 
because there's no blood. So I'm talking to Kirsty. He's got up, he's huge, this fella. He's a sergeant, he's huge. He's gone over there and he started doing this with the blood. He said, Ness, there's blood. So of course he's got her interest. We've gone over there. And Kirsty, she's a blood nurse. She that's what she does. She, you know, she works with blood. She she runs the, the chemo ward and she went over there. And there was blood splatters all over this. Now the thing is, there wasn't five minutes before, the size of him, you know, this is a small space, you would have seen the blood smeared if their feet would have gone through. So of course, Neil, Sergeant Major, right, is a window open, has an injured cat jumped in, has a bird flown in that's bleeding, what's happened? I remember him feeling the walls, just trying to suss this out, this scientific what's happened. And and there was nothing that nothing was open and and the funny thing is Kirsty actually told Neil off she had a go she said what why are you touching that you're a trained soldier you know not to touch blood without gloves and this is lady who works with blood every day and that's how convinced she was it was blood and she said why and I said I said why are you having a go at him she said he knows he's trained you should never touch blood without gloves and that's why she wouldn't touch it splatters they appeared within five minutes well the, they appeared within the time it takes to boil a kettle make a cup of coffee and sit down again broad daylight how you know work it out um I, I was here i was only living here a few weeks and um i came in from work and on the kitchen side i saw this a4 sheet of paper and i thought oh you know nicole must have left it for me or something i'm reading it and it was the man that hung himself in here death certificate and i thought i wonder where she found that you know where but watched that my first brain the first what i thought was it was um it had, didn't have a wrinkle or a crease on it it was like completely you know so it, it would if it was really it, surely it would have been a bit creased I mean anyway how, how was it even there but anyway so I've, I'm assuming of course she's found it somewhere or I, I don't know there's got to be some explanation Nic Nicole's coming from work I said to where did you find this of course she never she never um, she'd never seen it she went into a Nicole's a panicker she has to blow into a brown paper bag or she panics so of course oh what's you know what's this uh, I, and it was just there. So of course we're thinking somebody's broken in, someone's playing a trick. Okay, this is serious now, somebody's broken in the house. Again, so of course you do, you look at the window, you always look for the explanation, the rational explanation, look for the windows, door. nobody's broken in, nothing. This thing's turned up within hours of us leaving the house. Um, and, and, and it just appeared, well of course there were people coming around and I was showing everyone, I was saying, God, look at this, look at this, look at this. Um, at one point later on, his his wife had found out about it years later, and she'd said to me, "Well, I don't know how you could have had that, because um, there was only ever one, and um, it went to me. He has no other family. You couldn't have had it." And I'm like, "Well, I can promise you, and you can ask all these people in the village who saw that." And um, she was lovely, actually. She was she was very kind and gracious, um, but it appeared in this house. Uh, and I, it was the date, it was how he'd killed himself, it, it was everything. Well, I didn't know, because I was living away, I didn't really know much about the guy at all. And it was on the kitchen side when I came in from work, again in broad daylight. And it's like, really? But it happened, it's true, it happened, it turned up and it happened. It, 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 it just one of the things that this house did. There are many, many things. Um, to, to, to not, you know, I can't talk about three and a half years worth of activity because we won't have time, but, a thing that led me to leave, um, I was, um, but the last few months living in the house, I completely locked myself in my bedroom. I didn't use the rest of the house at all. I didn't, didn't, I didn't make a cup of tea. I, I didn't do anything. I'd get the baby from um, the child minds. I'd go straight up the, the stairs and um, I'd live in my room. I'd have packed lunches, you know, dinners. I, I, I never left. I never left the bedroom. And uh, one day, and also, when Jesse was born, I never left him in, in the house on, on, in one room on his own. If I was in here, he was here. If I was in the kitchen, he was in the kitchen. If he was upstairs, you know, I wouldn't, I knew it wasn't safe to, to, to leave him in any room on his own. Um, and this one time I thought, right, he was asleep in his cot. It's probably about half five, six, something like that. And I, I was just thinking, oh, it'll take me two minutes. It's not gonna be very long. So I ran, I went into the prison room where obviously the, the, where, the, where the witches were kept and the prisoners were kept. And I got the ironing board up. I thought I need to iron three things. That's all I need to do. This is not a hard job to do. And at the time, Jesse had, um, you know, these little Thomas tank engine toys. And um, 
I literally started ironing the first or the second thing and these four Thomas the Tank Engine toys just started going around my feet, making the little noise, chugging along. And my first reaction, people ask me, my first reaction was I was so angry with myself. I was so angry. I'm thinking, why did you come downstairs? Why did you, why did you do it? You know, just, just sheer angry with myself. Then, of course, I'm scared. So I turn off the iron quick. I run through. I grab what I'd, I'd ironed a shirt or something, and, and I open this door to go up the stairs. And at the top of the stairs, a man was standing there, and he had on brown trousers and a white shirt. He wasn't like the others. The others were very old-fashioned. And the lady I'd seen in her as well, you knew, you, you know, she, she, they were from hundreds of years ago, and, the, and this man wasn't. And the, the, the thing is, I left Jesse up there, didn't I? So, of course, there's this man there in between me and my baby. And, and, and I thought to myself, and the only reason I didn't leave before that is because I couldn't afford to. Because, listen, nobody was going to knock on my door and say, right, there's a £1,000 up front rent for somewhere else. There's a £1,000. In reality, that doesn't happen. I'd spent all my money on buying this house. And I had nowhere to go, and I, and I couldn't go anywhere. So I'd lived with this for three years, this constant activity, and that's the reason I didn't go. But the reason I did end up going was because I couldn't even iron a couple of shirts without without something happening and that's not including all the other activity that was constant door slamming you know I'd, I'd cut you know and also I'm on a budget I'm a single parent and you know everything's on a meter or you know I've got bills to pay and I'd come down the stairs the taps are running the kettle's just boiled the CD players on the TV's on and that electric meter was going round and round and also a practical side of a, of a haunting like that is Jesus it costs you money as well it wasn't just that you're terrified because I just got used to it you know you just get used to coming down knowing that everything's going to be on but it was costing money it's crazy to look at it like that but a reality a, a practical side of living in a house like this was was the, the the activity was at that extent where it it affected me like that as well so i've got three more they're pretty short just to kind okay. of round this out so who in your opinion is here in the house most of the oh, time I, think so. I don't know i don't um or who have you felt the presence of the most would you say I don't, I couldn't, it's hard to say who would be here the most. The house was so active, so much. I can't really answer, you know, who, who's here most. I don't, I don't know. This house was so active. It was men, women, you could hear the children. You could hear them running about upstairs. You could hear them talking. You could hear them laughing. You could hear women talking. You heard, heard what I would take to be a man, bang, 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 walking up and down the stairs. I don't, I don't know. Of course, this house is famous for Ursula Kemp. I don't believe it was her. I believe she was a good woman. I don't believe she was an evil witch. I don't believe she deserved to die. Um, when, I, when I first lived here, a lady came. I was sitting on the floor. Um, I was watching again during the day, and she walked straight through. And she had on old-fashioned clothes, and she was carrying a bowl, a wooden bowl. And what I noticed about it, which was I struck me quite weird at the time, the bowl wasn't round. It was kind of that shape, and it had something in it, like lit, what I took leaves or um, something of that nature. And she walked. I was sitting on the floor actually, watching TV, and she walked straight over me, and she just sprinkled this stuff on my head. I didn't feel it, but I saw her hand do it, and then she disappeared. Now, when people, people, witches are horrible. I believe, was it her? I don't know. She never gave me her name. It could have been her, um, but she, she was nice. Her energy, again, her energy was good. Looking back, I think, because I was, I was only living here again a few months then, I think maybe she knew what was to come and it was some sort of protection or something. I don't know, to be honest. How can, how can we ever know? Because unless they actually say it, it's only what, what, what we feel it could have been. But I don't think she was here all the time because her energy was so nice. I think, I don't think it's her that was here haunting this house. I, 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 my feeling is it wasn't. I think it was others. There was something very negative here and I've had that cleared and cleansed now. Um, I had um, a lady actually that flew over from America last year, June Lundgren, and she, um, she, she helped cleanse and clear this house. And also Father Ted Woodruff, um, both, both uh, man and woman of God actually. And they came with a cross and they, 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 they cleansed and cleared this house um, in the name of God. Um, and so the house has been so much better since. So the house is still haunted, 
but it's nothing like it used to be. And that bad and that negative, that horrible, horrible, that would literally whisper, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. It literally, if you could imagine living in a place and hearing that all the time, that, that bad, that black, that thing, that mass, um, all that's gone. Um, so what was there, to, to answer your question, I've digressed slightly, but um, there, there was so much here. Now, the house is still active. I, I, I was here the other day and I, I put a pint of milk um, somewhere I knew would keep it cold. And I, I came back later and um, it was up on the side near the kettle. Yeah, there, there's still stuff here, but it, it's not active. It's not got that bad, that bad evil here anymore. Oh, that's that's gone. That's why I can sit here and, and, and do this. That's why I can spend time in the house now. Um, so yeah, but to answer your question, I don't know. I don't know. They don't write things down, do they? We, we don't know. I mean, there's men, women, children, and layers and layers of generations. This is an old house. It's an old village. I've decided to sell the house now. The house has been in my care now. I've been the guardian of this very special house um, since 2004. Um, I'm the longest owner ever to have had it. We've researched back and, 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 and we've gone through the deeds of the house. And this house has been up for sale on average every three to three and a half years for over the last 200 years. The strange thing is I only lived here for three years. I've owned it obviously a, a, long, a lot of years since. But um, it's time for me now to, to let it go to someone else that really wants to, to look after it. It's a special house, there's no negative here anymore, but I've decided it's time for me now to, um, to let it go to someone else. Um, it's bittersweet for me, I love this house, but at the same time it's caused me a lot of harm in my life and a lot of upset um, and, and big financial turmoil to be honest, but at the same time I love it because it's so special and there isn't a house like it. Um, there, have been, there are only seven cages medieval prisons left in the entire country and this is the only one with a house attached to it so it's a very unique property historical wise as, as well as it obviously being the most haunted house in the UK the, the reputation of um, so the next person that takes on this house we have to be aware you know that this house is always going to court big media interest worldwide like it like it has with me um, the groups don't come in, in here anymore so it's just now it's just a peaceful house it's a peaceful cottage um, yeah, it's still haunted, but most places you'll find will be. But there's nothing bad here, but I, I need to sell it so, and I've decided that someone else is going to be very lucky enough to own it, a special person, that the house will choose, it, that the house will probably choose its, it's, uh, its next owner, the same as it chose me. Um, so it's up for sale with an agent. Um, the, the, the agent's name is Florent Lambert. It's uh, homedomus360.com. And so if you could put the link on, so if anybody out there that is watching this and, you know, please, you know, research the house, do your homework, Google it. And if you're interested in buying it, it it's time now for me to, to, to let somebody else look after it. So out of curiosity, how often do you come back to the house? I, for, I, until the house was cleansed by Ted, Ted, uh, Reverend Ted Woodrow, he, he cleansed this house for me um, a few months ago. Before that, I couldn't come back in here at all. It would literally be for something I had to do with other people. Since he cleansed the negative out of the house, I've been able to decorate, I've started decorating, um, you know, really brightening the house up. And, and I've been able to do it because I feel comfortable enough to. I was here waiting for you guys for two hours before you, you said, well, I wouldn't have done. I, I, I literally wouldn't have done. At first, I'd have said, right, ring me when you get, you know, you came a bit late, but I was gonna, and I thought, no, I stayed here. It was lovely, it was actually nice because the house hasn't got that fear for me anymore because that bad, bad has gone. Still haunted, but that's all right. But um, it's only by good now. There's just lovely, nice ghosts here now. Well, that's good. <laughs> so <laughs> anyone who takes it on is, gonna, is not gonna have the, the trouble that I had. You know, it, it, it took years and years to, to make this house, you know, clean and happy and cleansed again. I had to find the right people to it. It's, it's, it's a lot harder than people think. And lots of people try and cleanse properties and they can't do it. This house was so hard to do. It was so hard. I've been trying for nearly 15 years, but obviously um, I found the right people to do it and, and the right way to do it. So now it's just nice, but it's still fine. You know, it's still, it's always gonna have that reputation. Fortunately, unfortunately, I'm not sure that'll be up for the new owner to, decide so last question um, at the end of the day 
to people online who are going to be watching this who don't believe in ghosts, don't believe in the spirit world at all, what's one thing that you would say to them to kind of end this interview? To, to people who don't believe in spirits or ghosts, um, I care more about the opinion of that carpet than I do the opinion of people who don't believe in spirits or ghosts. I have no interest at all in it, to be honest. I've got no interest. It goes over my head. I don't, I don't care. I'm not interested. Um, I've seen it. I've lived it. There's so much scientific evidence now. That, you know, it's not the Victorians where everyone says, is there anybody there? And people start having breakdowns. There is hard scientific fact in every genre of the paranormal world now. And if people don't get it, listen, there's some people out there, a ghost could walk up, punch them in the face, and they'd say, oh, no, it was a trick of the light when their, their nose is bleed. Really? I don't have time for that. I don't have time for people like that. I just, you know, over my head, you know, I'm not interested. I don't care. I don't care in, a, in people's opinions like that. It's good because it's not that. true. It, does, it, it doesn't phase me. It doesn't bother me. I'm not interested. I don't read cut. I'm just not bothered. It's, it's them. Believe what you want. I know the truth. End of subject. Hello! <laughs>